Good morning, everybody. In today's presentation, we will talk about auto to cash flow. The like, so in this presentation, we will not talk about the basics, fundamental concepts of the auto to cash flow, but we talk about the auto to cash flow offered in Oracle Auto Management and Oracle Receivables. So. We talk about how to create a sales order, how to do the quick release, how to do the shipment form, and then run auto invoice to create the invoice in Oracle receivables. Those are the topics which we'll discuss in this presentation. And in between, we also talk about the various stages of the workflow offered in Oracle order management. So the life cycle starts with the creation of the sales order. So I'm creating a sales order for the customer number 1006. So then when I create this, um, when I enter the customer number, based on the defaulting room, lot of things are automatically, lot of, lot of the fields are automatically defaulted on by the system based on the defaulting rule, like order type, ship to, contact, price list, sales rep. So this is a basic order. So I, we, are, we are not doing much here, so simply, order header now enter the line excuse me guys i have a little cold here so in between my voice you feel it little stuff stuffy so i enter the item just a basic standard item uh, in uh, vision operations this is, let's say the quantity two and um, system will populate the price based on the price list uh, which as in our case it is a corporate uh, important thing we have to note down here is the line type so the line type based on the transaction type which is standard our line type is standard line invoicing and uh, i have to tell like the workflow which is associated with the order line is based on the line type so in this case, it's a simple invoicing, standard line invoicing. Now let's book the sales order. So the order is now booked. Let's navigate to the workflow for the order line. Now, if we look into the workflow for the order line, the workflow for the order line, the workflow for the order line is at the ship line workflow activity, and it is the status notified. So everything looks good so far to me. So now let's go back uh, to the, uh, the picker list. So not down your order number. So let's go to shipping transaction form. Query for your order. And go to the uh, action and select Launch picker list. Launch picker list will uh, trigger a couple of concurrent programs. There's a picker list concurrent program. So let's query for our order again and see if picker list is completed or not. Query the order again to see if the pick release process is completed successfully or not. Okay, so uh, the pick release process is still uh, running. Uh, I can see the next step is transact move order. So let's query again and see if it's done or not. Query 
query again and now I see it like the pick list is uh, done and the next step I need to perform is to do the ship confirm. So select the delivery detail. Uh, let me talk more about the shipping transaction form. So in the shipping transaction form, when we query for the order, it, it show me the delivery detail associated with the order line and the uh, delivery number associated with the order line and what uh, step it has been performed and what is the next step we have to perform. So now the since the picker list is done and we have a delivery number available to us, go to the delivery tab and do the ship confirm. So um, I'm not doing any, uh, I, I'm not selecting the Duffer interface flag. As, as all of you know what the Duffer interface flag is, in case you have a question about the Duffer interface flag, please refer my other blogs on this particular flag. So say okay here. It's taking some little time here. So this thing, uh, ship confirm process, because I am not deferring the inter defer interface flag, that is a, so this ship confirm process will trigger the interface trip stop too. The interface trip stop usually we call ITS. So this process not only process the delivery, but it will also process, uh, also execute the concurrent program interface trip stop. And it is an interface trip stop, which will basically update the quantity, ship quantity, shipping quantity on the order lines, as well as it will basically decrement uh, your inventory. So for more information of ITS, please refer my blogs and search for uh, ITS and you will get a lot of information about the uh, ITS. So say, okay, now let's see. Now, as we can see the delivery is closed, let's go to the sales order and see where exactly the lines are now. So the status was earlier awaiting shipping. Let's query it, query this again. And now it is shipped. Now, if I go to the workflow and I do a refresh, Okay, so it is still a notified. Uh, let's uh, wait for interface trip stop process to be complete. I just uh, refresh the interface trip stop. I just refresh the interface trip stop and now I can see um, the workflow for the order is line is at the fulfilled effort activity and now we need to run the workflow background process to progress the workflow for the order line towards invoicing and finally close. So let's submit the workflow background process for order line with a defer flag equal to Y and timeout now. Say okay and submit it. As of now, if we look into the order line, the status of the order line is shipped and the shipped quantity is two. That means that the line is fully shipped but the workflow for the order line is still at the fulfilled effort. So uh, we have already triggered the workflow background process. Let's query the line once again. So the line is still shipped. The workflow background process is still executing. I just refresh the line again and now it is closed. So order line is closed, the workflow for the order line is closed. But closing of the line doesn't mean the line is, the invoice is already created. We still need to run the uh, auto invoice concurrent program. So let's see, get our order number and let's go to receivable now. And um, let's interface. 
and auto invoice. Select auto invoice master program. I don't want to run auto, in auto invoice for everybody. So I will enter the order number as one of the input parameters. Let's submit the concurrent program. Okay, uh, there is some issue with my... So I enter the value for the auto invoice and I'm submitting this auto invoice concurrent program. Submit the auto invoice concurrent program. Okay, the auto invoice concurrent program is completed successfully. So let's um, go to the receivable and check for the invoice which we uh, which got created for order number six five one eight four. Go to navigation, receivable transactions. Go to transaction. So what I'm going to do is not the right way to query for the order. We should, uh, you know, uh, go to the invoice, uh, auto invoice log and see what are the, uh, if we can get the number of the invoice got created or if we can execute a couple of queries in the receivable and see if uh, we can get the invoice number. But here I'm going to uh, query based on the sales order number to check what is the invo what all, all invoices got created for the, this sales order number. So let's go to the query window, find window, and enter the sales order number. Uh, I know there is a, some performance issue, but let's see. There is always some performance. Okay, uh, wait a second. As, you, as we know, it's asking for me to enter some additional criteria. So I enter uh, some additional criteria and press the find button to see if I can get the invoice number or not. I just executed a few queries and found the transaction number. So let's find this. And now as we can see, uh, system, uh, like we have uh, for the order sales order number 65184, uh, invoice number 1003418484 got created in the system. And uh, uh, we can verify other data like the OU and the amount and the main ship to build to. And let's go to the line and see the line information created in the receivable for the sales order. So we can see um, the invoice lines. And uh, so uh, this, this was a complete flow base, uh, that I want to demonstrate. Uh, so with this, uh, our order to cash cycle is closed. So in this uh, demo, we learn how to create a sales order, order line, and the workflow status for the order line, how to do the picker lease, then ship confirm, and while doing a ship confirm, we learn how to, whether to check the deferred interface flag or not, and what are the consequences of uh, checking the deferred interface checkbox, and uh, how the ITS has triggered and processed the data in the order management and the inventory. And uh, after that, we run the workflow background process that uh, push the data to receivable interface and um, it push the data to receivable interface and then close the line. And afterwards we run the auto invoice concurrent program, which will create the invoice in the receivables. With this, that this demo is complete. Thank you very much. Bye.